Life is like a bowl of cherries. <laughs> yes, we're painting some cherries in a bowl and some cherries themselves for our mini Monday Madness today. I go everything step by step, but if you're a Patreon member, you can download the traceables and uh, actually a bonus traceable in there today. If you're not a Patreon member, check it out. I have traceables, ad-free videos, exclusive tutorials, um, and then coming up soon, probably some live streams um, on the higher tier. So also, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. And please don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials are up. So without further ado, let's get painting. Okay, so for this uh, tutorial, I'll be going over my supplies. Again, I always have the three inch square piece of 100% cotton cold pressed paper. It's Arsh brand. Um, I have my drawing on the, pap the paper already at my Princeton 8 and four long round velvet touch series brushes, paper towel, paints, and I'll go over them as I use them. Um, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the traceables. Uh, there's a bonus one in there also. If you're not a Patreon member, if you don't know how to draw a cherry, you know, basically, you can just stick, <laughs> you know, you can think of a circle. The cherries have a little indentation, so you can just go in a little bit. And then take a circle again here and the end one here. And then you connect the stem. It's pretty pretty straightforward. You can find some um, easy reference all over the internet. And then for the bowl, let me just grab my bigger pen. You know, again, you can find all these references on the internet. Just it's a little slight curve, curving in here to make the bowl. And then you're just gonna throw in the cherries in the bowl. With their stem some of them and then here's like and then we're going to do the gingham tablecloth so you're doing a lines going on a diagonal and then crisscross them and then we'll paint them as we you know as the tutorial goes on so and then the bowl you just make like a little um i have some cherries over here too on the side you just make like a little design. You can do a scallop edge. You can do a floral in there. You can make it any color you want. So, you know, I do grass. So we'll start off just by painting the simple cherries. Um, going through that. You can just use whatever red color you have. Or I'm going to mix. I mix the colors to make red. I'll take Quinacridone Magenta. See, I'm just letting it loose here. Clean up my brush. And I'll take the Cadmium Yellow Deep and I'll make a nice bright red. See that? Looks a really nice bright red. I can add a little more magenta. Now on the side, I have crimson over here. I might want to use that to get the deeper red. So you might want to have two colors going at the same time. So I mix that red with the crimson. I got a little bit deeper red here going over here on the side. This is more like the cherry red, hence cherry. <laughs> so. A couple ways you can do this. Let me zoom in a little more. You can get the whole cherry wet. I'm going to clean up my brush even more. Just with water. I would leave like a little, try and leave a little halo here. Paint everything except a little area of white on the cherry. Mine still has a tint of pink. And I'll grab that red that I made. I'm just kind of bleed it in there. See how I just did that? It's pretty intense. I'm just bleeding that color all the way around. And it should go everywhere except where I didn't paint the water. See, now I have that little halo. Now, it was pretty wet. So I'm going to go back in here and just grab some of this paint up. Move it around. And right there, you have a pretty simple, I'm gonna make the halo a little smaller. Cherry. You can leave it like that, but you can go in and add. See, I'm taking off the excess paint here, moving it around, just getting it really nice. I'm gonna add a little more of this red color. Now you can grab that deep red that you mixed, just at the tip. I just kind of bleed it in on the bottom here, on the sides, so you get that real rounded shape coming through. Just 
just like that. And that's a simple way to paint the cherry. Do the same thing again. Of course, my brush has still got that red tint on it, but that's okay since we're going to be painting it red anyway. So it's pink. Or you could do wet on dry, you know, whatever way works for you. Just a simple cherry, just to get you started to paint the colors. See, I'm just going to bleed in this bright red. I'm not doing hyper realistic cherries, uh, mine are more stylized. You know, if you want to make a hyper-realistic cherry, there's plenty of people out there on YouTube land and the internet that want to do that. I like to paint watercolor more of a style and a look than realistic. And I'm going and grabbing into my deeper red. Get this color a little bit wetter. So I'm just going to tap it in on the sides with my cherries. Like I said, it's more stylized. It's not um, a true realistic cherry. And then we're just going to make some green stems with a little brown on there. So I'll grab my cadmium yellow deep. And I'll grab some peacock blue. Mix that. If you have a green you like already, just use that. It's like a medium green I'm making here. Grab this yellow. You can even grab a little Prussian blue, make it a little bit darker. I still want a little bit bright though. Okay, here we go. And I'm just gonna go like this, connecting the stem. And then I'll make a leaf with that too. Just curve down here like this. One over here, connect it. While it's still damp, we can just go ahead and grab some like Prussian blue or a deeper green. Just kind of bleed that in on the ends of each of this leaf. And that's just a simple, straightforward cherry. You can even grab some of your burnt umber if you have that. You can make some brown, put a little up here on the top of the cherry. A little bit down here, just to get even more realistic. Simple cherries, cute. <laughs> so now we're gonna do a little more complicated one. This is cherries in a bowl. And so we have the colors. I'm still gonna use my Princeton 8. I'm still going to use kind of the similar technique. Um, you're going to picture where the the light's coming from. It can, light source can come from this side or that side, but I'm going to have it come from this side. So the halo will be on the left, not the right, like I did that one to confuse you. And I'll do more um, wet on dry. So I'm just going to go in here with that color that we did. Now it's looking a little pink. I'm going to add the magenta with the yellow. Get that bright red. Here we go, cherry red. They're very tiny when they're in the bowl. So it's gonna be a little more tricky to paint. And then some of the background ones will have to be darker than the foreground ones. And the ones touching there, the, the other cherries should be darker too. So some have the indentation and some don't. Just gonna fill this in. So you fill in the, I would fill in the foreground ones first. And even that little white halo like I showed you. The little white shiny halo. It's this tiny little painting, so don't get bogged down with, it's not looking perfect, it's so tiny. At this point, you can see this is really wet. You can you can kind of paint the one in the background over here. Maybe leave a little white space in between so you don't bleed into it. Again, I'm leaving the little teeny halo on top here. If you can't see, I'm going to zoom in even more. See, look the little halo here. You can paint some ones in the background. Just leave a little white space so you don't bleed into it. See how I'm leaving that white on the top because the light's coming from this way. Well, these are still kind of damp. 
the ones in the foreground. You can grab your darker red that you had mixed up. I'm gonna grab some of this water, it's really dry. Getting that crimson in there. I actually added a little bit more yellow and a little bit of Prussian blue to get that really deep kind of burgundy kind of red. So you just kind of bleed a little bit on the corners. If this brush is hard for you to control, use the four. So you want to kind of put that color close to the bowl and this one back here. Looks a little too pink. I'll go back in and grab my red. Like I said, we're going to wait till some of these dry. We can paint the ones in the foreground just like we did with the first cherries. And then we'll go in and we'll play around with the bowl and the gingham. So again, we're going to leave that halo facing that left side. And this one's behind it, so you might want to wait till this one dries before you paint that one. I'm going to grab my little darker cherry color. Just put it on the right side of the cherry. Kind of bleeding in. I'm going to grab my regular color. A little bit darker still. When these, like I said, start to dry, you can start to paint the other ones that are next to it. You don't want to bleeding it. Meanwhile, back at the farm, <laughs> we're going to do the bowl. So I want it to be like a nice bright blue, kind of like those ginger jars slash um, chinoiserie vases. I'm going to use a little ultramarine here. It's a little too bright. I might add a little Prussian blue to this. Mix the two. Just like that. Now it's going to be so wet consistency, but I'm going to tap it on the paper towel. And then I'm just going to put first, before I even start that, I'm going to wash this color down a lot on the side here. Oh, you can't really see that. I'm sorry. So I mix the two blues, Ultramarine and Prussian. You get a nice consistency with water, 50-50. I'm going to get even lighter here with a lot of water on the side. And then I'll show you why. So paint the bowl, just a light wash in that blue on both sides. Really, really pale and on the bottom. Really light wash. A little bit on top. You want to do this step first before you start painting a little decorative part of it. You might grab a little more of the blue just with the tip of the brush. I'm just grabbing a teeny bit of the blue we mixed that was 50 50. I'm just kind of bleeding it there. Now I have my cherry behind this, just be careful not to paint that. You see how it got a little bit darker? The bleed here. And then we'll do a little bit here also. So then it looks more three-dimensional. You see what I'm saying? And then I'm in next to the little cherry here. This is why it's good to use an number four brush. Very tiny. Voila! We're gonna let that dry and we're gonna let that dry by the cherry too. So we can go back to the other cherries that are darker still. So we can put the red color in here. The bright red. Leave a little halo. I'm using the small four now. Grab the darker color, bleed that right inside that. Go back into the black one here. Wash in this dark color. Now that dried, so I'm putting it in. I can grab my water, just kind of mush it around. Gonna maybe manipulate it a little bit. You can actually take that. I'm gonna go with the bright color again, leaving the white and the halo. 
see it's wet but the other ones in front of them are dry so we're going to bleed on that one only with the dark color see that and that's what you do with all the cherries that are behind the ones that we painted in the beginning a lot darker see that and one back here will be even darker still and then we put a little dark tone with this one here right next to the bowl I don't want to bore you painting all of them but that's what you'll be doing okay I'm just going to test this and see if it's dry. You can paint the front cherry. Now you have to think about this time, at this point. What color would I paint my gingham tablecloth? Would it be blue? So I'm doing the cherry again. Would it be red? Mm, no, because you got the cherries there already. And that wouldn't work. Could it be yellow? Yeah, it could be yellow. I think I'll end up probably painting it blue. Here we put that dark color in here. Just bleeding it. Like I've talked about a thousand times, and back here, and we'll grab the red in here. So this cherry behind is going to be a lot darker. We have to wait till all that dries before we do the gingham. So I'm going to finish all the cherries up, like we talked about, and we're going to come back and do the little decorative parts, the gingham and the. The stem. Okay, now that I've just filled in all the cherries, I decided I'm going to paint the gingham part under the cherries, I mean the bowl, green. So I have the bright green here. Um, I mix the yellow with the peacock blue. Kind of like a bright, pretty green. You can mix up any color you want. And water this down. And what we're going to do first is just going to paint this every other stripe. So. Actually, this green is a little ugly. I'm going to fix that and make it prettier. There we go. <laughs> okay. So we're going to just fill in every other stripe that we sketched out. And we have to wait till each one dries. And then we'll go in and we'll crisscross the paint the other way. And the uh, translucentness of the watercolor will actually give you that gingham look because the color on top of the color should give it pretty dark. If not, we'll just go ahead and those little squares will add the darker value of the green. So you see, just kind of go like this. Do you want to wait till it dries? Gonna fix that. So we're gonna wait till that dries. While that's drying, we can grab. I'm gonna grab some Prussian blue over here and some yellow. Make a nice deep green for the stems. Maybe a little brown umber too. And we can just put some little stems coming from the all the um, cherries. Crisscross them. This one right here. You could put a little leaf on one or two of them. I wouldn't do every one of them. They're kind of goofy. You know, you don't want it goofy at that point. And we can also um, start working on our bowl. So here are the cherries. I'll have them connecting like I did the first one. You don't have to have them connecting at all. I just decided to do that. I'll add a little brown to the top and the bottom of that. I'll put a little brown here on the top. The little cherries. So for the bowl, we'll come back to the game. We have that blue mixed up that we talked about. Zoom in. So we're going to do a stripe here. Kind of reminds you like the 1940s look. The bowls and the cherries. Some of the prints they had on fabrics. Another one down the bottom. Just use, I'm using the number four brush again still, by the way. And this is where it's fun. You just take your brush and just make like a little scallop edge. Boop, boop, boop. Little details. 
see. If I came with the paint, go in the bottom, do the same thing. Now you can add whatever kind of details you want to add. Um, to make it like a chinoiserie vase, you might, I'm just going to do like a little curly cue here. I'll add little leaves. I kind of make these up to kind of just, you know, make a little flower. See? It doesn't have to be perfect. Like the little stem coming from that. I can put some leaves here. Again, more like another flower coming on the side here. All you see is like the half of it. And maybe some leaves, same thing. See what I'm getting at here? Um, you're just playing around with leaves and flowers. Do a little crisscross in the center. And the curly cue, leaves. Or you could do like a more intricate pattern. Um, it doesn't really matter. Just play around with just putting the paint down and doing some kind of fun decorative design. Again, flower. See, I'm just kind of mushing paint around. It somewhat looks like a flower over here, but not really because you're not really seeing it. Have fun with it. Get a little cuckoo crazy putting some patterns in here. And you don't have to do blue and white like I'm doing. I just thought it'd be kind of fun. I can do another little blue stripe up top here, right next to the cherries. And on the bottom, I can use the tip of this brush, kind of outline the bowl itself with the blue, just really lightly. You can do some little marks coming down. It's not in a sketch, but I'm adding them as I go. See, as I'm painting it, you, when you do a sketch sometimes, you're like, oh, the sketch looks great. And then when you actually put it to paper, when you're painting it, you're like, eh. that's when you take your little self and you can say, I'm gonna add this. And I'm gonna add a little line of blue on the side. A little bowl. <laughs> you can get really fun with the details in here. Add some more flowers. You could have put a little birdie, it'd be kind of cute. Um, you can add some, grab some Prussian blue, really, and mix it with that ultramarine. And you can go in and use a darker value in some areas. It just kind of like changes up the design a little bit. Like little dots going across the stripe. Gives it more interest. So now our green should be dry by now, which I feel like it is. We're gonna do the second half of that crisscross, crisscross applesauce. See, paint over it. It kind of already creates that gingham for you, right? That look that we're going for. See how it got dark right on, right in the set, right in the squares, without having to do any special kind of work. With um, other kinds of paints, you would have to actually literally paint the darker square. It's not going to do that, but with watercolor, because it's very translucent, it does that for you. It's like magic. Now, when that dries, we'll go put a nice shadow in around the um, the cherries in the bowl. Gonna fix this. And you can put like a little gray. Now you could put a background color, a little gray line here. Um, but you don't have to. I think it's kind of pretty without it. But if you wanted to put like a, a striped um, wallpaper or something behind it, that could be kind of pretty. Got to be kind of tricky with colors because you got those already pretty bright colors going on. So we're going to wait, wait till this dries. It's still damp. And then we're going to come back and um, put the a shadow but meanwhile you can go just tweak your your cherries a little more add a little darker value around here you could add a little brown on the stem here and add a couple more stems grab some green add another stem here I'm still debating whether to put a background color maybe I'll do like a yellowy kind of color 
I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to let this dry and come back and finish this uh, shadow. All right, so I debated back and forth while I let this dry whether color I should put in the background. I didn't like the yellow. It was too harsh. I play around with the colors. Like I paint them right next to them. I think I like this turquoise kind of pretty color. So I will take my Princeton 8 long round. I have the um, peacock blue. Mix it with a little yellow here. Get rid of this yellow. So this nice greenish turquoisey kind of color. Really watered down. You can pick whatever color you want. See, play around with that. I'm going to really pick a pale color, just like a hint of a background color. Now, since I decided to do background color, I would have probably done it first before I put the stems in. But, you know, like I said, I like to paint uh, intuitively, and as I'm going, I'm like, hmm, maybe it needs a color in the background. Seems kind of dull being white. So I'm just going to do this really pretty, simple turk in the background. Just fill that in. I don't mind that I did it afterwards and there's some white around the leaves. And then of course I will add in some darker tones. So I grab that color, get a little bit darker back here on this side of the cherries in the bowl because of the shadows. And now see, I'll take some water and I'll kind of mush that around. So that side will be a little bit darker. All right, and so for the shadows on the bottom of these guys, you would have a little bit darker green where the gingham part is. See? Right on the gingham part. Be a little bit darker. And then the white area will have some gray. Grab some paints gray, water it down. Just put a little gray where the cherries are. See that? Do a little under the bowl too. Just a little dark shadow. Really simple. This one seems a little too dark. I'll lift it up a little bit. I'm just going to put it next to the cherry. And then this one. Come back and fix my green a little bit. I don't want it too dark. Just a little shadow. Yeah, see that? This got a little too dark. I can go back in with my brush, lift it up with some water and paper towel. Voila. Go fix that green. Sometimes it happens. We're human. I'll go back and put that little dark color there. Like I said, I don't want it too dark. I'll put the shadow of the color in the background. Even a little more dark here. Making it pretty simple. Yeah, there we go. We could add a little gray kind of down here too. With the bowl. Just a little bit. The sun's coming this way. And you could make the blue on the side of the bowl a little bit darker. See? Just wash a little more color there. But don't go too crazy. You want to keep it nice and pretty and light. So that's that. We have our cherries. First one, second one. 
if you want to not have these floating, you can put a little shadow on the bottom of them. But that's that. Cherries in a bowl. Cherries in your hand. Have fun with it, guys. You know, like I said, you can add a little more darker tones back here. You know, I might go in back again when it dries. It's just a matter of seeing how it looks and get a little bit darker. See, I'm doing this. I'm holding it up in the air. Just a magician. But that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, please don't forget to hit the bell the notification button to know my tutorials up. And also check out my Patreon. If you're not Patreon, I have exclusive tutorials there on Thursdays. That's four tutorials a month, uh, not on YouTube, exclusive with Patreon members that come with traceables or reference photos. I have traceables that go with my YouTube videos, ad-free videos. Um, and then I'm gonna be adding on the higher tier once a month, I'm going to figure out what day would be good. Maybe a live stream. That's coming up. So check it out. Um, take care, guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section, and I'll speak to you soon.